IMF growth forecasts uh, showing growth in South Africa for this year at 4%. Next year, 4.2%. So upwardly revised, Mark Ingham and Craig Pfeiffer uh, not so convinced that the IMF can get things right, especially when it comes to growth outlooks. What is your view? And I suppose we've got the quarterly bulletin on later today, so that will also be quite telling in terms of where we're headed on GDP front. Mm. Yes, good morning, Nalini. Um, yeah, we also think that they are a little bit on the optimistic side. Uh, we've penciled in uh, a GDP growth forecast for the current year uh, of 3.7 and then 4% for, for 2012. So we're a little bit under their, their expectations. And I think uh, really it, a lot rests on uh, what's going to be happening uh, in terms of consumption expenditure. We've seen signs that things are improving, but we still think that the consumer is a little bit reticent. And then also the infrastructure spending that is that is proposed and it's on the table. Everyone's talking about it, but we have to see it actually coming through aggressively because obviously there was a huge drop off after, after the World Cup. So we need to see that gathering momentum. We need to see the consumer coming back uh, on a more sort of solid footing. And then maybe we could uh, raise uh, our GDP forecasts to higher levels. But as, as you were discussing in the interview as well beforehand, I, I, I would concur 100% in terms of 3.7%, uh, 4%, 4.2% 4 is not the kind of growth that South Africa needs if mm -hmm. we're going to start uh, you know, tackling uh, unemployment and those socioeconomic issues. So we need to achieve higher growth rates. Otherwise, we're going to probably continue to, to get this, this jobless growth. Mm. Well, let's uh, look at some of the most recent news out. In fact, out a short while ago, the, the Saab's uh, uh, chief economist, Mondi Nyandi, was saying, and speaking at a breakfast, saying that uh, the RAND has not been a threat to economic growth uh, in South Africa. Also saying that the MPC would not raise rates on cost push pressures alone. So does that pretty much uh, draw a line in the sand when it comes to growth taking preference over what we could see on the inflation front if it's not driven by core inflation? Yeah, I think uh, the, the Saab has undoubtedly been a lot more sympathetic to the growth, uh, the growth situation and the output gap. Um, and, you know, we've got to bear all the, the entire macro economy uh, in, in mind when, when the central bank looks at uh, interest rates decisions. So, uh, you know, looking at the core measure and, and also probably looking at second round inflationary effects is what will be at the forefront of the Reserve Bank's thinking. Uh, we've seen high oil prices, but of course, we've seen the rand also being quite strong. The same principle applies when it comes to food prices. So we need to actually start seeing high wage demands coming through, those second round inflationary pressures coming through before we're likely to see the Reserve Bank uh, hike rates uh, with conviction. I think, uh, it, it, you know, we, we still have the view that the the Reserve Bank won't need to hike rates this year. They'll probably hold off until the first quarter of 2012. Quarterly bulletin out a little later today. So balance of payments very important. A current account deficit is expected to widen from 0.6% uh, at the end of last year and could possibly reach around 3.4%. What are you pricing in? Because essentially uh, we are liking the uh, capital inflows because they're essentially funding our deficit. Isn't that right, Michael? Well, the, these uh, capital flows have kind of been coming and going um, at the beginning of the year. They kind of fell off a cliff and then towards the end of the first quarter, they started to pick up again and now it looks like they're dissipating again. So that's the, always the problem that South Africa faces when looking at funding that current account deficit is the bulk of the financing of those flows comes from portfolio inflows, which tends to be erratic uh, flows. We need to attract more foreign direct investment and obviously we're going to be looking for, for the bulletin in that regard uh, later on this morning. We want to see those greenfield investments coming in more, more consistently so that we can continue yeah. to fund that current account deficit. Because, yes, we think the current account deficit is going to continue to widen, uh, mm -hmm. or start widening and continue to widen uh, over the coming quarters. A target of 682 yesterday. We saw a bit of RAND weakness. Uh, what are you looking at today? Because the RAND has regained some of its last ground. But then again, we've got a weaker dollar at this point, And we possibly could have uh, billions of RANDs flowing into the South African market because of the Walmart Massmart deal, right? Yes, there has been uh, talk that uh, the, the flows have, have come in uh, or that shareholders have been uh, paid uh, yesterday. Um, it's difficult to gauge when the actual transaction materialized, uh, in other words, the cross-border flow. 
Um, but yeah, in terms of the RAND's direction, I would uh, be of the opinion still that the RAND's risk is to, to the upside. In other words, the RAND could weaken again. Um, and I think we, we've obviously taken a lot of direction still from that euro dollar movement. And we're waiting to see what's going to come out of Greece. We're waiting to see what, how the euro is going to react. We've got an FOMC meeting coming up this week as well. How accommodative is the Fed going to remain? Those are kind of key international questions and themes that are going to probably have a huge burn on our currency. Because for all intents and purposes, the RAND remains heavily stuck in a, in a fairly tight range. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we could grow up to 82 again, but then we could very well uh, moderate back to the 670 level. So we seem to be kind of stuck within that range for the time being, and we're waiting for some direction. Maybe it'll be the bulletin, maybe it'll be those international factors.